G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be looking at the plane that is intentionally worse because reasons. This is the Phantom FGR2, which is essentially a uh, up-engined F4C with slightly better weaponry. The F4C was, uh, from what I know, given to the Royal Air Force, and the Royal Air Force was like, no, we don't want your general electric engines, we want our Rolls-Royce Spey engines. Uh, which is perfectly perfectly valid, and the Rolls-Royce Spey engines do add an extra boost to performance, whilst adding a little bit of weight to the Phantom. But they also did something else that uh, Gaijin has kind of uh, sort of neglected on the Phantom, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But first, we're going to be sort of having a look at roughly how this particular plane plays. Now, you can't sort of go and talk about a, a plane at top-tier jets, at least, without mentioning its weapon systems. In War Thunder, uh, top tier at least, the weapon systems become basically your thing that you judge each plane by. The higher you go, the more the weapon system matters and the plane matters less. We've seen this with the Harrier, we've seen this with R60s, and we've seen this with the uh, MiG-21 BIS as well. Having uh, a multitude of weapons as well as the combination of performance does add a little bit extra, but it's mostly those weapon systems. You can see things again, like I'll mention the PFM, uh, being a reasonably well-performing plane, but not having the weapon systems making it sort of lack behind. Now, the FGR-2 is equipped with AIM-7Es, which makes it excellent for those long-range engagement snipes and those sort of missile jousting, if you will. Uh, it also has the same radar as the F-4C, which is incorrect and should be something different, which we will talk about a little bit later. It also has AIM-9Ds, which are basically the uh, naval versions, up, well, the, the US Navy's upgrade of the AIM-9B, uh, basically giving it a bit longer range and a bit of a uh, higher G-tolerance. Now, this particular match is going to be fairly short and uh, not quite sweet, but uh, short and bitter, if you will. In this particular circumstance, I run up against three enemy, uh, e enemy F4Es, or an F4E, a couple of F104s, couple more F4Es later on, uh, but you can see here, this particular clip, I want to show you the sort of potency of the AIM-7E. It is a very, very uh, valuable weapon in the case of the uh, of the Phantom, and especially the Phantom FGR-2. It's one of those planes that kind of relies on the AIM-7s a little bit more. I managed to get a really, really nice missile snipe with that particular uh, AIM-7E, uh, and now I have a dogfight on my hands with the F4E here. The F4E is more agile, but if you play your cards right, you can force an overshoot. You do need to step right off your throttle, and you need to slam on the air brakes. You also need to be fairly careful of who's around you. Now, in this particular circumstance, I don't end up surviving the entire engagement, but I do manage to sort of sit behind this guy for a little bit. The FGR2 is very, very heavy. Of course, it is an F4C with the uh, upgraded engines. So the F4E, which is a sort of revision of the fuselage, it makes it a little bit lighter, installs the M61 Vulcan in the nose rather than uh, underneath the fuselage. Uh, I'm not actually sure if it gets different avionics or if it gets different uh, engines. I assume not though with the engine section. I can't be sure about the avionics though. Regardless, we have a uh, fairly interesting dogfight going on here with the F4E. I really want to be able to get an AIM-9D off and at this particular range, you almost certainly will. Now, I almost managed to get my guns on target, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the plane up and I'm going to try and roll back over onto the F4E in order to try and get myself sort of uh, onto his 6 properly. I'm trying a little bit hard here. I'm popping the landing flaps. I'm sometimes stepping on my air brake. I'm sometimes stepping off the throttle. Basically, if I want a little bit more uh, turning capability, uh, I need to get it down to at speed where it is going to turn a little bit better. So around the 400 to sort of 450 kilometer per hour radius, or sorry, range is where I'm going to be able to get the uh, the turning because of the flaps. Now I managed to sit in behind him just for long enough to get a critical hit, and that's going to put him in a flat spin there. I'm not going to waste a missile like I did uh, in my what the fuck thunder video, which hopefully you guys will have very much enjoyed. Now I do get jumped by an F4EJ at this point. And the EJ does have a little bit more agility from what I know, uh, and it's pretty much done deal here, the F4 EJ, unless I can sort of keep above him uh, and make him overshoot by playing a couple of very clever tricks. 
uh, I'm pretty much fucked here. And not only that, there is an F-104A that is heading straight towards me. Now, I didn't see this guy originally cut in, but there he goes, he sets me on fire, and uh, after all of that, the uh, F-4EJ decides to follow me into the ground. Just add a little bit of insect injury. I could add a nice little three-piece there, and um, my team could have killed that F-104 just a little bit earlier, but that's okay, it's one of the very, very frustrating things about flying the uh, FGR-2. So, the FGR-2 itself, as I've said, doesn't have the correct radar. And why is this a problem? You might think, well, you know, it doesn't really make a difference. You know, if it has the MiG-21 BIS's radar, what difference would that make? Well, the radar that they decided to install on the FGR-2 is called a Pulse Doppler Radar. Now, I don't exactly know how a Pulse Doppler Radar works. I can take a guess, uh, judging by the way ultrasound works, and I, I'm familiar with how ultrasound works as part of my uh, part of my sort of field of expertise, my uh, area of study, my career path. But uh, in this case, I don't really want to take a guess. All I know about the Pulse Doppler Radar is that it uh, basically negates the effect of uh, ground clutter. Ground clutter is that little sort of thing that makes your little square that sits around the plane jitter and uh, get pretty crappy as you get closer to the ground. And this is one of the things that will stop things like AIM-7s being fired uh, from a downward angle or at low altitudes. So why is this particular to the FGR-2? Well, they installed it on the FGR-2 and it should be modeled in game, but it's not because Gaijin decided to either go the lazy route and not install the proper radar or decide to not introduce Pulse Doppler and to not give the FGR2 a, uh, an advantage in this circumstance uh, for balancing reasons. Now, personally, I don't think that they need to. Uh, they, I, don't, I don't think that they need to withhold the Pulse Doppler radar. I think Pulse Doppler radar is a uh, good addition for the Phantom here, which would give it, uh, I think it's called look down, shoot down capabilities, but I might be wrong here. My knowledge on Cold War era uh, aircraft and anything in general really uh, pertaining to the Cold War is kind of lacking so if you guys would let me know in the comments if I'm correct uh, or if I'm wrong that would be fantastic now in this area here I can see that I've spotted a, uh, a little target now I'm gonna wait just before that little arch on the radar crosses the uh, spotting on this particular MiG-21 SMT uh, I just get a couple of grazing shots off this guy uh, and of course I'm going to continue in a straight line. The Phantom is one of those planes that you cannot turn fight in. It doesn't matter what Phantom it is, I would never ever turn fight in a Phantom. MiG-21 here decides that he wants to go in for a quick turn and I thought it was all over here. There's a MiG-21 below me, a MiG-21 behind me, there will be a couple more MiG-21s popping into uh, view and thanks to the spotting system I wouldn't have seen them if they had launched a missile at uh, three kilometers, which kind of really sucks. So I'm just gonna try and outrun these guys. The FGR2 has those two Rolls-Royce Spey engines. I th I'm pretty sure it's Rolls-Royce. Um, and I'm just gonna keep going. This thing does about 1400 on the deck when you really push it. Uh, and so I'm not going to give them an inch because if you do, they'll probably take a mile. So I'm gonna roll back and uh, try and help out a couple of teammates. I noticed that the uh, MiG-21s are starting to go for the Mirage. Uh, I noticed that this MiG-21 here is a little bit slow and a little bit low. At this sort of altitude, you can kind of afford to use the AIM-9Ds. They are longer range than uh, a couple of the other missiles. They have a fairly decent burn time. Uh, but I personally think that they should be equipped, uh, the, the FGR-2 should be equipped with the uh, AIM-9Gs instead. Now the AIM-9G is basically the same missile, but has a higher G tolerance off the rails, which means that you can pull a couple more G maneuvers whilst uh, launching this missile. For me, I think that would be a little bit of an easier route for the Phantom, considering that it doesn't pull enough Gs already to keep up in a turn to launch missiles. The uh, low AOA really does hurt the FGR-2 in this respect. So, now that we have Pulse Doppler and uh, AIM-9Gs, what else would this thing perhaps uh, benefit from? I, I honestly think that that would be enough. Uh, I would at least like to try it that way, uh, because you know, if you don't try it and go nuclear, well, then you're not really going to know what the best balancing solution is. So my personal recommendation for this particular plane's balance would be Pulse Doppler Radar, giving it the ability to fire AIM-7Es uh, 
down at its opponents, uh, as well as aim 9 gs I think that would be an excellent position to have the, uh, the FGR2 in. It isn't particularly far, it is fast, but the FGR2 does get outrun by the BIS. Uh, it barely gets out, out accelerated. It's, it's a very, very close competition. Uh, but there are plenty of things that the BIS, as well as the SMT and MF can do that the uh, FGR2 can't. And having a couple of things that the FGR2 can do, but the BIS, MF and SMT can't, uh, would be a lot better, I think. Um, perhaps if you had to give it to look down, shoot down radar, you could maybe take away its AIM-9 uh, or AIM-7Es and limit it to the AIM-7D if you really had to. But uh, in, look at this circumstance here, I've been basically caught out a little bit by the MF, uh, and the MF I, I just have to keep watching out for. At this point here, I have to force an overshoot, and if I you know, didn't have a teammate here, I would basically be fucked. There's not a whole lot I could have done uh, if I didn't have a teammate, but thankfully I do, and thankfully this MiG-21 decided not to go for me, but to go for one of the um, guys that were chasing the MF. I got very, very lucky here, and if this particular circumstance didn't happen, I very likely would have been shot down without much of a thought. The FGR2 is a real struggle bus, and giving it a little bit of an advantage in the avionics field or in the weaponry field would really give it a massive boost to its combat capabilities. It would also make the plane viable, uh, whereas at this point I would handily say that this plane is suffering immensely. The FGR2 is not a plane that uh, should also be fighting alongside other Phantoms. I personally believe that the uh, FGR2 should be fighting with the Americans and the Japanese, uh, but that's just personal preference. But I think a lot of you can agree with me in that situation. I don't really think that Phantoms should be fighting Phantoms, especially considering their playstyles uh, against each other are quite frustrating, especially with the AIM-7Es. Uh, it is hard to sort of jockey for altitude when you know that you have got the uh, M7Es in play on the enemy team, um, but at the same time you don't have the acceleration and the climb rate to burst up to your opponents when you need to. So for me, having the ability to fight other MIGs and other sorry MIGs and MIGs only would be uh, ideal in this sort of circumstance. Unfortunately, here I don't get the shot on the MIG-21 BIS, and the MIG-21 BIS oofs himself into the ground. Denying me my ace, and that would have been the first ace I would have had in the FGR2. I honestly handily believe that this plane is absolute dog shit. Uh, I believe that you shouldn't be playing it unless you have a death wish or unless you really, really like British aviation, uh, especially until it gets fixed. I find that what Gaijin has done here is either uh, negligent, lazy, or too conservative in terms of their balancing. Uh, but honestly, I just want to see this thing a little bit more competitive, especially if you just gave it aim 9 gs I think that would be okay, um, but I think that something needs to be done to this plane to actually make it combat viable, because at the moment it's quite frankly not, and it's quite frankly nothing but frustration to play. This and the match that you saw on uh, yesterday's video was the only good match I had, but until then ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed, take care, and I'll catch you next time.